Yeah. Hello. Hello, fine human beings of the internet community of video watchers. Today, I'm going to get back to work on my 69 Volkswagen Beetle that I called Ragnar, who I will be giving away to one of you once it is done. The link is in the video description below. Today, I have commandeered a young angel food cake, who is a rookie pilot, to help with some of the sanding because there's a lot of it to do. If you're new and like to get caught up on this project, up above my head is not a link to the last video where I worked on it, rather than a helpful guide to breeding shih tzus in poodles. Fun fact, it makes a shit poo. <laughs> what? A shit poo? <laughs> where I last left off, I got the entire body of the car all blocked out in 150 grit with the exception of the edges and little hard to reach areas, those are all done in 220. So let's get straight into it today with the work. So this stuff right here, guide coat. It's a little tub of black powder. You take it and you coat the entire surface of the car. Look, you can already see it. See, right there, you can already see the purpose of this. These are some sand scratches that are showing up in this 150 grit. Kind of like how this polyester coat had a color changing effect, it went from pink to gray. It's the same exact thing as the polyester coat for that purpose. So now I have to coat literally everything in this. I'm probably gonna do panel at a time just because this bump into this, you're gonna get schmutt all of you. That's why we're all black today, except for my shorts. Okay, so there you go. The whole entire roof is all guide coated. Once I make all that stuff disappear, then I know the entire roof has been evenly sanded in 220. And food cake is over here in the corner, working a door in 150. Yeah. And he's just gonna do all those accessory pieces that are off the car right now, because I didn't do those in the last video. Everything I did in the last video was done using the Dura blocks all by hand in 150 grit. But for today, I'm gonna to be using the DA in the 220 and 400 with a big thick foam backing behind the sandpaper. Take these things out so I don't start screaming at you. So I left a couple areas right here to give you an example real quick. This is freshly guide coated. This over, ooh, I stepped on it. This over here is just one quick pass with the DA. So you can kind of see some of the sand scratches a little bit better. And then over here, this is like two or three passes with the DA. See the sand scratches? You can see the texture right here from doing the crotch face pattern. Again, that's the whole purpose of the guide coat. So that way you can make sure you have an even surface sanded. So you can see right here the yellow glaze that's on top of the bare metal. That's where the dent was. And when you dent metal, it doesn't just create a little ding. It also pushes the material outward like a crater. So that's what you're seeing right here. That's a high spot caused from the dent. wondering about the little crevices crevasses crevasses everywhere that still has the black guide coat in them well this is called uh, asshole wax and it's designed to <laughs> what is this is asshole wax um, what is it really called asshole wax asshole wax asshole wax asshole wax super asshole wax Ass, asshole wax. I wasn't far off. <laughs> so you just gently cup the asshole wax like this and then finger it into the slot ever so smoothly. It's really satisfying to do. It's approximately 360 grit, which I'm finishing it all out in 400. It's close enough for the crevasses. I'm gonna wanna knock out all the asshole wax first before I do any 400 because 400 is greater than 360. 
3 If my camera gets in and out of focus a little bit on this video, it's constantly covered in dust. I'm trying my best to keep it clean, but it's a never-ending task. Food cakes stuff is so... I gotta stop calling you food cake. <laughs> Lord Angel of Food Cakington. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if they start calling me Lord Angel, I'll be satisfied. Lord <laughs> All of his stuff is also knocked out in 220 now, so we got the entire car left to do in 400 and it's done. The inside of my shop looks like we were baking nose tingle cakes all day. It's like super nasty in here and I had just mopped the entire thing with Fabuloso. I almost fell last night. It was nice and clean in here. Wow, this is so much smoother. I'm not really going crazy with the different camera angles in this video because I'm trying to touch these cameras as little as possible with all this dust in here. I don't know if it's gonna screw my cameras up. I really hope it doesn't. Yeah. Hello. It looks like it was a fire. It's covered in soot. But that was a lot to spread on this thing. Now I gotta sand all this off. Only problem is, I don't have 400. All I have is 500. That's fine. It just means it's gonna be a little bit smoother of a finish than I anticipated. Everything will get knocked out in 500 before it gets painted. Angel already did this door in 500. Wow. Oh, that's nice. It's the final sanding. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. If you have a shop and a lift and you don't have a hammock to attach to it, you are doing life wrong. Sir James May is looking kind of lonely in my shop, so I got him a friend to accompany him. Package. Any guesses on who the new shop mate is going to be? Da da da! <laughs> yeah. So since I already shot these jams, I need to feather the body color into them same color. I'm gonna try to tape it as close to this seam as possible because that's where I'm gonna do my soft edge. Let's see if I can do this without sticking my hair to it. All of this area I just taped off over here is not getting sprayed. Everything over here is gonna be the blend area between the new paint and the jam and the rest of the paint on the car. So I'm using a gray scotch right now and I'm just gonna lightly scuff the area that's not taped off just to give a little bit of mechanical adhesion for when I blend into the jams. The reason why I did it this way is because of the fact I'm shooting this car in single stage. So it's super, super easy to blend the two paints together. This also alleviates me having to go inside and out of the vehicle while I'm spraying it in the booth because I had to shoot the dash too. And it just opens up a recipe for failure, I think, of having the air hose accidentally slap something or just tracking dirt in and out of the car. This should be good right here. That's taken care of. Now, uh, the little spots where I sanded through to bare metal, trying to get this thing nice and flat. Like right here, a little bit right there, right there. Spots like this, the very edge back here. I think you get the point. I can't just spray my sealer on top of that. So what I'm gonna do is this step right here, self etching primer. I need to do super, super light 
like transparent almost dusting coats. Probably gonna do two or three of them just to cover up those bare metal spots. Right here was a bare metal spot as well as a couple more bare metal spots right here. You can see they're all covered up now. So this right here is 800 grit and all I'm doing is essentially wiping the surface. I'm not pushing, not putting any pressure. I'm just kind of wiping the surface to get any of the little overspray nibs, the texture you can hear from the, the self etching primer. You hear down here, it sounds really smooth. Up here, here's where the texture is from that overspray down here. So this is a bit of a problem. I thought one can would be enough just to do those little tiny spots and uh, it wasn't and the paint store is now closed. Ta-da! Brand new can. Done, 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 done. Goose. Yes. No? Do pumpkins sing? Well, how I... Do pumpkins even float? Yeah, sure. They're pretty hollow. This is a wild Fred in his environment, squeezing cock onto the side of a bug. And this stuff like has a really long work time, so if you don't get it perfect, it's fine. Like we can clean up the edges and stuff with the waxing grease until it's perfect. And then we're literally just gonna do a, a little. And there's a little bit too much in there, but that's okay. This was not done on the previous paint job. That's why there was crusties and paint flaking. Oh. The cock dribbled on your toe. I got cock on my foot. So the seam sealer is essentially epoxy because it takes two parts to make it harden. And uh, that means that it's body workable also. Boy, I'm making a mess. This is why you have Fred do it because he's an artiste. Since Angel Food Cake is his apprentice, we shall see how apprentice job is doing. Hopefully better than mine. Oh, wow. I use way too much. So now he's using some solvent based wax and grease and just kind of wiping off because we got to wax and grease the whole car anyway so this is just making things nice and tidy i gotta blow off everything that is ready to be wax and grease now what? this is sad i have to waste an expensive microfiber to do wax and grease because i don't have any cheap ones i don't really have any many good ones either. I got like two left. It's already six o'clock in the evening. I spent the entire day doing this and didn't film hardly any of it just because it's so much work. And filming these YouTube videos is super time consuming when I'm trying to actually get anything accomplished. That's pretty clean for a first pass. This is my kind of Christmas tree right here. One that holds car parts instead of shitty ornaments and LED lights. And I say I prepped this out in 500, but in all actuality, because I had to do so many little touch-ups for bare metal, it's kind of prepped in 800. Smooth. I'm really nervous. Like, legit nervous. <laughs> I'm confident in my abilities, but I'm just nervous that this is not going to turn out good. So a little smudge of some seam sealer. That's better. I'm trying to think. The only things I've painted so far is parts of the MR2, my go-kart frame, and the dash for that beetle. I think that's it. I can't really do any wax and grease remover on this yet because I gotta wait for all this seam sealer up here and these grooves to cure. And it takes 90 minutes. So that means tomorrow I'm going to paint the beetle and all its accoutrements, Togo White, and that part of this will be done. With the exception though of doing the rubber undercoating in the wheel wells and then doing inside the frunk and a few other little areas like in the engine bay and stuff that I'm gonna be doing in black just to give it some depth and make it pop or something. I breathed in a lot of chemicals today. I'm mildly dehydrated and 
feel a little weird. So I'm gonna wrap this up, edit this video, and sleep. I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye!